Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Omnia Performance Podcast. I am Fergus Crawley. Hi, I'm Johnny Payne. And together we are Omnia Performance. Today we have our second guest on the show, Liam Holmes, who we will introduce you to very shortly. But before we go any further, a couple of things to request from you. First of all, whatever platform you're listening on, please do hit the follow or subscribe button. Do make sure to share this episode with a friend if you find it valuable, or if there are any episodes previously you have found valuable, please do share those as well. And you know what, if you want to share all of them, that's perfectly okay with us, isn't it, Johnny? I would think so. Yeah, well, clearly I can't speak but I'm nodding <laughs> anybody who can see me knows I'm <laughs> nodding yes <laughs> caught you off guard there didn't I <laughs> <Did you? laughs> so beyond that just rate and review the show on whatever platform you're listening on please as it would make us smile very much you could see us smiling if you were watching on YouTube I'm trying to speak and smile and it's very difficult but I think today it's worth getting straight into our conversation with Liam so yes. Liam hello how are you doing Hey lads, yeah, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on the pod. Not at all. Welcome, welcome. Would you mind just giving us a bit of an overview of who you are and then who PH Nutrition is as a bit of an overview for those listening? Yes, absolutely. Uh, My name's Liam. I'm the owner of PH Nutrition and we are a nutrition coaching company. Um, Basically working with anybody who wants to do this training and that can be from CrossFit to endurance to cycling to simply going down the Globo gym and, and, and repping a few things out. And my uh, my background is actually in elite sport. Um, I was originally sports uh, trained in sports therapy and worked at a number of different football clubs from Fulham to Tottenham, Republic of Ireland. Um, but then I retrained in nutrition, did my master's and um, found the world of CrossFit because uh, some dude was running up and down the gym in, in, in Fulham and uh, find things around and I thought that looked quite cool so uh, kind of got into CrossFit um, and then slowly transitioned out of football um, rode the CrossFit wave a little bit and that's where PH Nutrition was born um, and now it's kind of grown to you know got a number of different coaches six coaches seven coaches all kind of specialising in different areas and um, and yeah this is uh, this is where I'm at at the moment so it was a real obvious well for those that don't know first of all we are partnered with PH Nutrition as our nutrition partners and that was a very seamless relationship to move into one because we obviously get on so well with the dulcet tones that you're hearing if you're listening or the handsome face that you're seeing if you are watching if, if you're watching something else yeah so well, you, yeah. you yeah. could be staring yeah, at somebody on the street I, imagine you can imagine <laughs> that's, that's the voice you're listening to but nonetheless the, the the big thing was Johnny was looking after two of the nutrition coaches that work for PH Nutrition as athletes so they had a really good understanding of the nuances of hybrid training and the important nutrition considerations that go with with that and then we'll hold our hands up and say that we don't necessarily have the depth of experience in the lower hanging fruits the more day-to-day considerations from a nutrition lifestyle habitual point of view because we've we've been focused so much on programming for so many years it's almost yeah. become we, we look at things very objectively so that human element was where ph nutrition fit in really well for us yeah certainly lee and i uh, when we first met uh, talked quite openly about what our particular problem with with delivering nutritional programming. And I think, although, as you know, I have a a master's in nutrition as well, what we didn't have and don't have is the experience um, with as many athletes in in an area where we're able to kind of manage them in in a, a, I hate this word, but in a more holistic sense. You know, so what we, what my background, as you know, uh, was uh, looking after weight category athletes, mostly combat sports. And it's a very specific niche, isn't it? And you're managing it through a process to, to a very specific outcome. Whereas you have this experience with managing the athletes through a much larger, broader context. Uh, I, I think empathy is the key word, actually. I, yeah. don't, I don't think we have enough understanding of the, the individuality that goes with the, the range of people that we look after from a nutrition point of view, as we do programming. Possibly. Uh, and also what we didn't have, which you guys do have in abundance, is a, a kind of a historical buildup. You, you, you spent many years doing this and now have uh, what we describe as an excellent hub of educational uh, information and uh, uh, just just a general, you know, a, a deep dive into any kind of particular aspect. Whereas we were trying to answer those questions. Certainly, I've been trying to answer those questions for years off my own specific knowledge, as opposed to saying, "Well, here's something we've made earlier on that actually suits you, and here's how we're going to adapt that to you." So, not only the experience, but actually the, the kind of the practical ability to deliver on that experience was something yeah. that, that you guys came to the table with, uh, and we were very impressed by. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I think one of the things with nutrition is that um, it's one area I think people overcomplicate so much yeah. um, 
And what we wanted to try and do, and, and the underlying principle of what, what we do and pillage nutrition is to try and simplify things and deliver it in a, an easy to digest manner and a format that allows you to really understand why we're asking you to do something. Um, but like you said, that, that there's there's a wide range of people, um, no matter what you know. So we take an on the There's still a wide range of people, um, different lifestyles, different backgrounds, different goals, and it's all well and good saying, you know, I'll follow this nutrition plan for endurance or hybrid training. But the nuance and, and the actual detail around that, it, you know, we need to to really kind of dive down into the basics in terms of you know not just focusing on what you do for your training session and you know this is something that we'd like to say when you looked at when you said about looking at it from a holistic point of view um you know that's definitely something that we try to really really kind of not separate ourselves from from anybody else but just try and answer everything yeah. you know like yeah. in a in a you know kind of big big picture kind of thing it's you know well if you can't cook well this is what we're going to do some simple meals if, if, you know you struggling with this area then we've got a resource for it and over time these have slowly been built out to uh like i say to a platform that we integrate with the omnia uh, members and clients that kind of allows them to kind of dip in and out regardless of where they need kind of nutrition advice um so yeah hopefully this is going to help people to to really get the most out of their training um performance but also outside of the gym outside of their training environment yeah, yeah. as well can i take you back a little bit further than, than we have done as well. I'm interested to know, you had this kind of previous career in, in the same industry to a degree, I suppose, sport, uh, 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 physical physical therapy, wasn't it? You were yeah, doing? sports therapy, yeah. So what was it that, that caused you or, 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 or uh, took you down that slightly different route? Were you looking at nutrition from, from, a, from the perspective of those particular athletes and thinking there's a trick missed here or was it something that you were interested in or something perhaps in your own athletic why, why the change? Yeah, basically, a little bit of all of the things that you just kind of touched on now. Um, we were really lucky at Fulham that we had a really progressive um, boss who's kind of one of my mentors, Mark Taylor, and he gave us a huge CPT budget each a year. So we were, over the time that I was there, I, I managed to kind of be trained in lots of different things in terms of, you know, the physical therapy side of things, acupuncture, kinesiology, you know, Chinese medicine, manipulation, all of these types of things. But... It was then slowly as I kind of got through those and as I uh, got a little bit older, I um, just started to read about nutrition a lot more. There was a strength and conditioning guy there that um, was, was on it. And back in that time, I'm not saying this is like 20 years ago, but like at least 10 years ago, there was only like one or two nutritionists working in football full time. Yeah. It wasn't really something that was at the forefront of everyone's uh, thinking. So we started to kind of really take a vested interest in it uh, as a club and which meant that you know, it was a bit more kind of talked about um, rather than just drink Lucas Aid and eat pasta, um, which was <laughs> kind of what it was when I first joined. Dear, dear, was um, it? Yeah. And, uh, and then I, so I just started to kind of read a little bit more about it and I spent a lot more time with this strength coach and um, and then they decided that I didn't really want to go down the route of training more in, phys in uh, physiotherapy or osteopathy or, or that side of things. So um, nutrition was the next kind of step for me and I thought, there's a huge area to make a real impact at early sport. So yeah. did it in exercise and nutrition science at, at Chester and then was really lucky that um, the strength coach actually left to kind of set up his own practice. So my boss gave me, me in at the deep end. So I had the uh, end of, well, the task of trying to get 25 millionaires to buy into me. Um, <laughs> and trust what I was saying, even though I just qualified like two weeks ago. <laughs> um, but then, it, I, I, you know, I learned a lot straight away, but... One of the things that people ask me is like, well, what, you know, what, how did you do it? What are the things? And the, the principles are the same. Yeah. And, you know, the principles are the same. But what you, whether you're an elite athlete or whether you're a weekend warrior or whatever, um, I still use the same methods and the same techniques, mm -hmm. like training meals, anytime meals. You know, certain principles around protein and carbohydrates and, and you know, recovery. You know, these things don't change. It's just that those elite athletes they probably do it a little bit more consistently. Um, and have to have certain things kind of dialed in a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that that's where I kind of got into nutrition, and then uh, then everyone kind of started to take it a little bit more kind of seriously. And it started to kind of get more yeah. kind of widespread. And now, you know, everyone yeah. everyone talks about nutrition and has got an opinion. So <laughs> interesting thing you touched on there a second ago when you go back to those millionaires uh, something you said just before that uh, about uh, the impact that you're making on on these individuals lives um 
obviously the stakes in a certain sense are higher. I don't think they're different. They're just they're, they're just uh, underlined by a lot of money and and uh, you know different outcomes. But what so, something that Fergus touched on in fact earlier on was what we struggled with. I think from a nutritional perspective is understanding the principles and and you know how much carbohydrate would be required for this particular performance task, how much energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, is something that we're both pretty au fait with. Certainly something I have a background in. But actually the 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 the, the human it's kind of elements, yeah, the, the, the personal yeah, elements. Delivering and, it, delivering yeah, it. Away. Yeah, it's, it's under, understanding digestible. the impact between Fergus's interpretation of how to go about that uh, is different to my interpretation of how to go about that, even though the numbers are the same. And a uh, good example being, you know, the children that I've got, uh, you know, four children and all the rest of it means that I can't perhaps manipulate my diet in, in such a manner without yeah. actually sort of ostracizing myself from the family. So I have to have uh, a, a different methods and different ways of going about that to meet my own nutritional demands. Fergus is the same for different reasons. And when you're looking after, as you say, 15 millionaires, uh, and we can you know, extract you from that altogether and, and consider all the clients that you've got, got or the clients that we share in actual fact, it, it's, it's, it's such a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, 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 it's an interesting uh, concept to, to, to dive into and to understand how best to change habits and how best to look at people's individual yeah. needs on that front. Is that something yeah. that, that was was a, a big pull for you? You know, like you say, yeah. you know the numbers, but actually delivering those numbers to that individual is a very different question, isn't it? It is, it is mate. And um, like you said there, guys, it's it's it depends that personal approach. But one of the principles that we got people to to focus on, and this goes from, this came from the from from elite sport. It was at a time where people were focusing on marginal gains and one percent, and it was just like, right, what you know, little things can I do? to make, if I add loads of little things up, it will make a difference to my training, recovery, my performance, body composition, etc. But we actually flipped that on our head and actually was like, well, that's 10%. If you, we had world-class basics as our, as our kind of mantra, as our, as our kind of, um, we really focused on rather than marginal gains, because you could do the 10%, you could do the 1%, but if you're not doing a 90% correctly, 10% is not matter. So when I came out of, elite sport i was like world-class basics how can we make things super simple that people can do the 90 percent because if people do the 90 percent they're pretty much going to make progress rather than worrying about what pillow that they're using or whether they're using cbd oil before bed or whatever actually build a better sleep routine eat enough in the day so you're not hungry at night and snacking late so it was it was shifting like you said like to people's personal situations whether they had kids whether they traveled a lot whether they commuted and creating resources and creating a plan and and, and coaching um to be able to be able to deliver that regardless of their situation and that was a real key thing that we got to people to focus on is that that kind of fundamentals and uh rather than kind of going into the more kind of sciencey things or the people that you know the stuff that maybe people thought were a little bit sexier and, and actually needed when i'm like cool we can layer on that complexity further down the line but we really looked at like say that kind of let's say a human approach and it's not easy because i ended up as you well know johnny like you end up answering the same questions a million times a day but what happened was that is we created a resource so we basically created content based off of what people were asking us yeah yeah so rather than thinking, oh, I think people might need this, and we're actually all up, well, I don't really care what you know what I'm thinking needs to be done. Sarah's just asked, oh, have you got uh, some recipes um, for grab and go options? Because I can't, I'm picking the kids up from school, and I need to train in 90 minutes time after I do that. Cool, we can 100% do that. That is practical nutrition coaching, and if you can address that with your clients, you're going to make better results because rather than going, oh, here's Sarah, here's you know, a lot of macros and a lot of numbers and you need to track every gram of food and hit these targets and stuff like that. And you've got high carb days and low carb days and it just blows their mind. It does. Rather yeah. than making sure that she's got a really good quality snack in the right amounts that she can eat on the car on the way to pick her kids up. That, so her 5.30 session, 6 session that evening has some quality in it. For me, that's how we've been successful in terms of growing, you know, the business and being you know, delighted to be partnered with you guys and, that the, that's that's for me is where a lot of people kind of miss things and and don't necessarily get the results that they need. I, I think I, I think from our point of view, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite proud from a commercial and growth sense as 
masculine blokes with ambitions and things and want to be in control at all times that ultimately from a humility point of view we we saw the service that you could provide as a way of providing a better service to our athletes because you have been asked those questions thousands of times through having more coaches specific to nutrition through a range of backgrounds through a range of ethnic backgrounds demographics whatever it might be and programming is our bread and butter that's what we're excellent at and whilst we obviously both have an excellent understanding of nutrition applying it to those different backgrounds and contexts is something where we'll hold our hands up and say we don't necessarily have the experience to do so so that, that's yeah, again I, I feel like we've made the same point several well, times I, I but it's it, i think it's important to note is that it's yeah. it's okay the, the bottom line here is we we acknowledge the weakness in our in our service potential well, no it, it wasn't a weakness because it wasn't something that was built into it but we saw a way that we could add value in a way that yeah. we necessarily couldn't match the standards of somebody who's been asked the question as you've said practically these are the questions being asked here are the answers. So there, therefore, that's yeah. that's solving the problem. Whereas our attitude was, to to be frank, was right. What do we think the general consensus is going to be? But because we've got our closed-minded mindset of we've been doing that's this it. for ten yeah. years, what we think the questions are going to be aren't the questions we're being asked. So it's uh, it. it's even when uh, what, what I've found to be excellent from from your guys' perspective, and, and so now from our perspective, I suppose we should say is that going back to all those questions, going back to Sarah's question about what she's going to do, picking up school, et cetera, et cetera, is that you can and have collated those questions and, and, and you know, manipulated the answer so it fits X and Y different, uh, uh, you know, different opportunities and different uh, questions and, and are able to then say, okay, this question has been answered before, but not only has it been answered before, here are the 10, 15 sort of most frequent ways that has been asked. Here are yeah. the 10, 15 most frequent ways that we've responded to it. Uh, have a look at that, but then come back to us and we can work with you directly to figure out, you know, which one of those things works for you, why it works for you. And going back to that very human level, what you get, I'm sure, I don't know if Sarah exists or not, I feel like we know her now, but what, what you get is that, that Sarah is able to come back to you uh, and not only say uh, that the, the session was good, which again is this kind of slightly myopic viewpoint that we had on it, it was how have you performed? She's also likely to come back to you and say that her day was much better. She felt yeah. like there was a sort of a convenience or a, a value add to her own situation. Uh, and one that would probably, again, from a parent perspective, one that impacted her positively with her children, because the likelihood is that kind of crossover of mindset where I want to get my session done, but I've got to pick the kids up. I need to eat the food. Yeah. And then you get frustrated with everything and probably <laughs> make mistakes as a parent. But if somebody's able to provide that resource in the middle, say, listen, let's take away the pain, you know, th- th- this pain problem here let's take away this issue in the middle uh, and provide you with an answer and again on paper it's probably worth saying we probably could have answered those questions but it would have taken Sarah to ask me the question I go away but from or Fergus goes away with the question think about the answer give that answer from our perspective as opposed to giving the answer from the perspective of the tens or scores of people that have asked you that And, and you know that's not really it's, it's not allowing Sarah the opportunity to do things she wants to do. We'll leave Sarah alone. Yeah, there, but it's, you, you get yeah. the point. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. And it, but it's also what we've done, again, is created that resource. So then we yeah. send Sarah it. So then she goes, oh, I had the conversation with Johnny, but then it went out of my head. What was I meant to do? Can't remember. So then you answer the question again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we created the resource to be like, look, Sarah, here's, here's five options. Check, you know, you can work your way through them and let us know which one worked best for you. And then there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, it's 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 taken time. You know, this is something that you know it's not happened overnight. And you know, the the online platform that we've kind of built now, and the the, the resources that we've created via social media and and through our you know our platform is it's taken years and years and years. But um, now it's at a point where we can get a little bit more specific. So you know, we're not we're talking about parenting, but like say now it's like a pre-workout snack is an issue for a lot of people mm-hmm. so this could be for parenting it could be because you're stuck in meetings it could be because you're a coach and you're you've got to deliver a class and waking at your tupperware halfway through delivering a class is not acceptable so how do we answer these questions and i think i think that's a that's a kind of really key thing for what we try to done and a lot of coaches do they answer the what like what do we people need okay cool we need we need better pre-workout snacks so people get more energy in training so they can actually get the most out of it rather than just surviving through it but the how like how do you actually get someone to do it that's the key thing and i think that's where you know we've invested a lot of time and energy so why don't we focus on that a little bit then because i i mean something i was going to come back to before was a trend that 
I've noticed, you've noticed, we've discussed a little bit, is a lot of people are trying to focus on the one percenters when they don't have the ninety nine percent in in mm. in order. And I think that's uh, somewhat the fault of marketing. Good marketing, might I add, but marketing mm. nonetheless. And I think just from a practical point of view, given that we obviously want to cover how people at home can manage their nutrition as hybrid athletes, what is, how would you define the 99% from a hybrid point of view? I know with our programming, we have a basic approach and then we have an advanced approach, which is the approach that I talk about in YouTube videos and share online. Yeah. So why didn't you just break down if we've got, let's not call her Sarah because she's been done to death at this point, but let's bring in Billy. Billy, Billy from the sidelines. And Billy is coming to us as a 85 kilo male who is lifting weights four days a week and running twice a week. How would we go about optimizing his nutrition from a sort of intermediate point of view and then from a more advanced point of view? From an intermediate point of view, that's a really good question, mate. So what we would do is get Billy's metrics, so weight, uh, height, age and look at his training volume and we have built our, our own kind of like macro calculator and software and stuff and so from an intermediate point of view what we have to do is like calories are king like we one of the biggest things that one of the areas that we see prevents people from making progress is just low energy availability for the amount of training that they're doing so in the end that comes down to caloric intake and so what we would try to do is get from an intermediate point of view, is get Billy to eat enough to help fuel his training. And that comes from eating enough across the day, across the week, and kind of leading in and to and out of his sessions. So what we would do is create, give him a calorie target to follow. We would then probably get him to, to follow a kind of protein and carb and fat target for the day. Not breaking it down in terms of like, you know, exact timings and exact meals and exact ratios. But we're making sure that Billy's eating enough across the day to help fuel his strength training and and, um, and, and running sessions. And what that's going to do is making sure that he's not, that he's thriving in his sessions and not just surviving. We were given really clear guidelines in terms of um, uh, timings around his session for that day. So if he's training in the morning, really this is what you're meant to be doing. And it would be like, okay, 16, 90 minutes before your session, within one hour after, throughout the day and a regular pattern of eating. Other than that, we would like maybe give him obviously kind of you know specific food choices, but there would be a bit of flexibility within that as long as he's kind of within ten percent of his daily targets. For me, that's a relatively simple up to an intermediate level approach. So if Billy does that, we've taken his metrics, we've taken his training times, we've taken his goal, whether that's to kind of maintain weight and increase performance, whether it's to lose a bit of weight, whether it's to gain a bit of muscle, and then we've timed it around his sessions. So for him, he's got a personalized approach to his nutrition. Can I just interject yeah. and of put a, ca a caveat in there before we go on to the advanced side of things, which is what if Billy wasn't fond of the idea of tracking calories for whatever reasons, whether it was a psychological reason, whether it was a convenience reason, what would you suggest if that was the case? Well, then we would use different methods in terms of uh, portion control. So if you don't want to track calories and macros that's cool we don't need numbers we eat food so you don't need anybody to have to have to follow the amounts uh like a number kind of a target but you do need to have an understanding of portion control it can't just be random mm -hmm. so we would advise Billy to be like okay look at his current meals maybe change his portions to the like us like i listed to earlier alluded to earlier we have training meals and anytime meals and what that basically means is structuring your meal plate to help you kind of fuel and, and recover from sessions, but also then get an abundance of kind of good quality foods in to help your recovery and health and, um, and satiety away from your uh, training sessions. So we would advise him when to eat a training meal and what it would look like from a plate and portion point of view. We could also then use hand portion control as well. And so again, we would still give him the meal breakdowns and the timings. So we would still tell him when to eat around his training and, and, and across his day. But the actual kind of say uh, the implementation of macros and calories wouldn't be there. It would be portion control from a plate point of view, very, very visual. Um, and then a simplified kind of approach in terms of hand portion sizes. Yep. Um, this is something that I think, you know, we have simplified plans on our hub and, and they work so well. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is how we would uh, would approach a non kind of macro and calorie based. Yeah, you said it yourself thing. earlier on. That simplifying things is really the aim of the game, isn't it? Because 
definitely. You, know, you, you can get as sciencey and as detailed and as, as sort of you know calories and macros and micros and all kinds of detail. And and then yeah. where's somebody that's not already qualified and that going to go apart from drift off into space and forget about look, fuck it, I'll just have a Mars bar. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, one thing, it's one thing on that, Fergus. Uh, you can, we can do is. Often when people start a nutrition plan, they think that they have to change loads of things and what they're eating. One of the key things that we get people to do is just to make changes to their current diet and current meals because you've already cultivated the habit and the skill of cooking that or buying that. And it's in your weekly shop and it's in your recipe, you know, kind of book where you, you know, across the week we make this. So we make a chili, we make a spag bowl, we make, you know, chicken fried rice. Okay, cool. Right. So for Billy, I would be like, take your current meals and look at what we've given you in terms of a training meal and any time meal and just adjust the portion sizes of those first, because that's going to be an easier transition for you rather than making a load of recipes that we're going to send you or meals that you're going to, you, that you've never made or, before. Or perhaps adjusting, stress. adjusting from, if you make it a chili, going from 20% fat mints to 5% fat mints. Or if you're having Greek yeah. yogurt in the mornings, make it a... Zero percent fat rather than a two percent fat. There All these go. little things add up over time. Oh, and it's, uh, where's the veg, Billy? Where's Come the veg? On. A little bit of veg. Come on, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where's the veg? Everyone on the planet. I think it's fair, <laughs> fair to say, <laughs> for the most part. But let's go back to the the, the the balancing the books method that I call it. And I think if you can give an overview of 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 how we approach it from your side of things, um, and then I'll try and summarize in a in a sort of practical point by point way that people can take take so that they can leave this leave this conversation with something that they can actually apply to their own day-to-day -day training with what sorry with balance yeah so just balance with the look. with the adjusting day-to-day -day. so the the advanced method that we have in the in the pdf the pdf so for those that aren't aware with the yeah. one on one-off training programs you can buy the 60-week training programs on our website um you get a pdf document which has a link to a macro calculator we've done in collaboration with ph nutrition where you've got an intermediate mm. option which is more basic as we've just run through or an advanced option whereby you can balance the books, quote unquote, day to day based on your outputs that day as hybrid training can be highly variable, which means that your mm. weekly nutritional intake can be a little less predictable depending on your outputs per session. So we want to be working to the closest degree of accuracy possible. Yeah, th this is definitely something for people to be checking out your YouTube video where you walk it through because it's a superb explanation. But what we would do is calculate your your daily, you know, your daily requirements. So your total daily energy expenditure um, is calculated by our our, our uh, online calculator, and then we would take your goal. So we have you know different goals that you can choose, and then this gives you your daily caloric intake. But we would base this just on your strength numbers, and then what we would do then is in any like so Billy's doing two running sessions a week. So we then get Billy to take ninety percent of his calorie output for those two running sessions and eat back those calories. Um, and you know what what, what you find in is then you're, you're kind of offsetting any uh, any kind of like say variance if if he adds an extra run in then he would increase it if he doesn't manage only get one run in that week then again it's it's uh, he's got a baseline intake but then it can be variable based on his um, kind of more kind of cardio or aerobic um, output and this is a really simple method and what we find is that you can do that on the day so you can eat back the calories on that day or if it's a really long kind of session maybe on a sunday and maybe the caloric output is quite high then you're more than you know what we can either do is be proactive with it and kind of make sure that you're eating a little bit beforehand so you might eat an extra 300 calories beforehand knowing that you're going to be burning 1200 1500 uh, or you can kind of bleed it over into the next day um, so it's a tiny little bit more fluid uh, that takes a little bit more tracking um i think and, it i think it takes a little bit more um, confidence and control in your day-to-day -day nutrition in terms of being yeah. comfortable with adjusting the plan. I think that's one thing to flag here because if yeah. you're somebody that needs rigidity and lack of access to temptation, shall we say, yeah. then having to constantly vary what you're taking in based on what you're doing that day can make it a little bit more fluid because it's less predictable. But the converse of that is if your training is a bit more predictable, so for example, with one of our 16-week programs, you can look ahead and, and yeah, exactly. roughly estimate what the session is going to look like. So you can say, right, within the seven-day window, Monday to Sunday, my baseline is X. If I add on the run from Wednesday and the run from Saturday, that is an additional 1,500 calories across the week. So you add that to 
X and then you divide that by seven and that's what you eat on a day-to-day -day basis. And we found with our clients, from a performance point of view, the considerations are, generally speaking, some people are hungrier on training days, some people are hungrier on rest days. So there is mm. one direction they can go depending on their lifestyle because ultimately, we had this conversation with Dr. Phil Price recently, didn't we? Whereby mm -hmm. you've got all the theory and all the logic in the world, but if it isn't practical, it's useless. Yeah. Because <laughs> because if the person's not adhering to it because it doesn't that, work around their day-to-day -day life, then then it's only as good as only as good as the theory behind it. And if that's not being applied yeah. because the person can't apply it practically speaking, then that is the case. But I think just just to break it down in simple terms for somebody listening, if you want to go away and figure out your calories now, then you can use an online calculator. Is there a publicly accessible calculator on your website, Liam? Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it is, and you, I mean anyone can Google. Yeah, kind of yeah. So it. as long as uh, as long as I as long as I'm not uh, moving people away from uh, where mm -hmm. they need to go on the website. But if you can find a calculator online, put in your put in your activity levels, it'll spit out your TDE, and then mm -hmm. that will establish your daily baseline. Once you've got that number, that is incorporating your strength goals. So your strength goals should be what you consider when you are determining your activity levels plus step yep. count. So people yep. often ask me in DMs and things am I highly active or just active? It doesn't really matter what you are, just make a best guess and then work around that because at the end of the day, the calories will adjust. So step one is establish your daily baseline through an online calculator, but incorporating your strength work. Step two is then on the days that you do cardio, you eat back 90% of the calories that you have burned in that period. 90% because there is a bit of a degree of inaccuracy with trackers with Strava. Yeah. So we'd rather err yeah. on the side of caution than we would excess because excess will probably when we're not necessarily tracking that slab of butter that we had with our toast and the jam. Maybe the uh, <laughs> the little nibble of a Lindor that we didn't necessarily put in my fitness pal. We're probably better to wear on the side of caution because at I the end of the day, we are humans. You're feeling things about yourself. Yeah, really. no, I am. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I feel exposed. And then, <laughs> so daily baseline, point one. Daily, uh, number two is you eat back 90% of those daily calories on a, 90% uh, of the calories burned on any endurance activities. And then that balances the books. Option number two is that if you have a predictable schedule, you can then estimate your calories burned ahead of time, work it into your weekly schedule so that you're eating the same thing each and every day. If you want a meal prep, if you want to order food in ahead of time, then that means that you know what you're going to be having, when you're going to be having it, how it's going to look. Guesswork's gone. But like me, if food is one of the... Uh, I think I've just made it very clear that I will occasionally grab a Lindor from here or there or everywhere, which means that I quite I like being quite fluid with my food, and that means that I focus on a day by day basis. So, yeah. from a from a what works best for me, what works best for you point of view, I think we've covered a fair few options there. But what are the? We should probably rewind a little bit to just just go from the sort of top top line side of things. Or what are the common mistakes that you see people making? Self self driven athletes, athletes at a certain level of commitment, whereby we know they're going to go to the sessions. We know they're going to work hard. What are the common mistakes that you're seeing on a regular basis when it comes to executing the world-class basics that you talk about? Very good question, mate. One of the biggest things is not eating enough pre-workout. I think post-workout through marketing or whatever, post-workout shakes, protein companies, everyone focuses on post-workout. What am I going to eat post-workout? But if you're not fueling your session efficiently, you're just going to be surviving through it rather than thriving. And the more training that you're doing, I think more pre-workout is often overlooked. And when we think about pre-workout, we just think about a shiny blue powder that makes our face tingle rather than actually eating real food. I think people need to really focus on, you know, pre-workout nutrition and, uh, you know, maybe eating a little bit more, you know, not saying that you need to be pounding down, you know, 700 calories, 60 minutes before you're going to go and, you know, do a running session, but definitely thinking about fueling your exercise with real food. That's one number one. Um, I think, Low energy availability within day, especially if you're doing kind of double day sessions or really long sessions. And what I mean by that is basically not eating enough during the day when you're training across like a multiple uh, two or three days in a row, and then getting really fatigued, really beat down, craving lots of food, and then over consuming foods later in the week or at weekends or in the evenings. When actually, if you can distribute your intake a little bit more evenly, really focus on making sure that it doesn't get to 1 p.m. and you've eaten 300 calories and you've, you know, trained in the morning for an hour and a half and you've, you know, commuted to work and stuff like this. You're going to get more out of your training. And like you said about earlier, you're going to function better in your day-to-day -day life, whether that's kids, work, social environment, you know. So this is definitely, you know, something that we see as people start to kind of get a little bit more, 
uh, well, laudable volume in terms of their training. And I think the last one, I know we touched on veg. I, I, I'm, I'm a big component of like, eating enough vegetables, eating enough colours in your plate. Um, but I think protein distribution, eating enough protein across the day, um, is definitely something commonly that we see with a lot of people. And what I mean by that is often people eat a big bolus dose in the evening. And the actual consumption of enough protein across the day is relatively skewed. So it might be a tiny bit of breakfast. Sometimes it might be good, you know, if we have a, you know, yogurt or eggs or, you know, some form of a non pastry based uh, breakfast, then sometimes it could be good. You know, lunch is hit and miss, snacks are relatively low, and then again, usually a kind of bigger thing in the evening. Whereas actually, we find that recovery, um, satiety, so hunger levels are a little bit more stable if you consume a little bit of protein at breakfast and at lunch and in your snacks. So fundamentals, those three, if you, if you kind of start with those, you know, and, and have a look. This is what I always say to people when they listen to the podcast or read articles. Of, when we're talking, have a think about what you're currently doing. If you can take one or two things and focus on that, so you're like, do you know what? I'm not eating enough protein. I'm definitely going to just try and implement that habit and then see how you get on. Then you can layer on something else rather than going through and thinking, oh, I've got to do everything that they've kind of yeah. told us. So Conversely. Those three, mate, are definitely the ones I would start with. Conversely, what are the things you see people focusing on too much that don't necessarily matter as much as they believe they did believe they should rather blue shiny powders that make their faces blue shiny powders, yeah. Yeah. um yeah I, I think people focus on um post-workout protein intake too much uh i think it's important you're gonna get sued um, by uh, about 97 supplement companies i think i'm afraid yeah i know they're gonna comment me but that's fine bodybuilding.com um, is coming for I'm you i'm not saying don't consume it i think it is essential but you know, running from your workout and worrying if you're going to chug your shake is it's just something I think people can, you know, worry about a little bit too much or talk about a little bit too much, whereas actually, you know, like I said, distribution and fueling your exercise uh, is, is probably a little bit more important. I think people focus on that. Um, I think supplementation was something that people focused on a lot. I, th- I think people are actually a little bit more educated on it now and, and actually do, do understand that supplements are something that you need to add on after a good diet is in place. Um, I think, think, I think some supplements people fo- kind of focus on. I think, again, going back to the basics, um, I still, are still essential. But I, I, I don't know. I think there's a bit of a, a, bit of a shift in terms of that. Yeah, I don't know what you guys think on that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think people are more yeah. aware of um, yeah. the, the reinforcement and science around it, I think generally it's, it's speaking. It's a testament to, to companies like your, your own, Liam, in actual fact, that the more experts we have uh, and uh, the more individuals we have like yourself who, who actually care about the outcome, Going back to that kind of human level, you, you, you want to make a positive impact on people. The more, the more, the more opportunity people have to learn these things, and and what you're describing over and over uh, succinctly uh, is the the fundamentals are, are are much more important than the kind of grain on of sand on at the very top that people seem to think is nice and shiny and exciting, and mm-hmm. uh, and I think it's, it's it's worth noting that it is probably you know supplements is a great example of that, and it's worth noting that guys like yourself who are actually saying listen you know it's great uh, th- this particular new supplement that's out is, is, is wonderful but let's get all the other things in gear first once we've gotten all that kind of stuff done once you've got your as you say your protein distribution once you've understood the need to fuel that workout rather than just slamming a protein shake after etc once you've understood this uh, need for color and variety on your plate etc then you know once you've got all the bases covered then we can start looking about the, these like uh, little thin slices yeah. and layers on the very very top, great but. great analogy i've just had come into my head here is road cyclists especially down your way liam who'll spend thousands of pounds on yeah. aero brake covers oh god yeah, and yeah, this yeah. aero yeah. this aero that when I, I don't i'm using cyclists as an example here but i don't want to make it seem as if i'm suggesting everybody should lose all body weight but for example if an aero brake cover for 600 quid saved you 125 grams would it not be easier to just lose 0.2 percent body fat for example so it's a case of get, getting your house in order getting the foundations built yeah. before you start stacking everything on top and i think as a society it's, it's that quick win mentality isn't it it's that you know i think that is to, it. to buy that is it. buy rather than yeah. work 100 <laughs> well, you know I, i've had that conversation with with a, a cycling uh, expert 
chap out in Stirling that owns a store and he was saying it's surprising how many people think they can buy their way into the uh, upper echelons of, of, of the races you know and it's like you know you actually need to get good at cycling first and the same applies it's a good analogy the same mm. applies here is that you know you're gonna have to why not get good at nutrition why not get good at understanding your own body your own likes and dislikes I'll go back to Sarah understanding what's actually convenient yet useful for you get all those ducks in a row and then you can start playing with the minutia and the sort of granularity of detail which guys like you yeah. understand and know i mean i'm sure uh you know again going back to those millionaires at fulham full circle back to fulham for you is that there would have been guys who were very very switched on and very attuned to that kind of stuff who had the fundamentals in place who listened applied and then you can come back to say you know what we're going to do is we're going to tweak this very tiny small thing but the problem there is that the 10 others that don't have that kind of stuff are going, well, why am I getting this kind of shiny powder? And it's quite difficult to, to, to be able to separate people from that because of, as you said earlier on, because of excellent marketing. But, you know, I'm glad that there's kind of, I'm certainly glad that we've uh, uh, crossed paths uh, and that Omnia and PH are in partnership here because the, the, the absolute crux of it for me and for you has to be able to deliver the things that we weren't able to deliver which is that mm. practical understanding of how to help people understand and, and live through those fundamentals without us know, knowing all that granularity of detail and not really being able to deliver it. So uh, we're, yeah. we're grateful for that, I think. I think it's, I think the it's great, athletes, man. The athletes are certainly grateful for that, we can tell you that. Without yeah, it. I mean, it, it's, it's, like I say, guys, we're, we're absolutely delighted to be partnered. And one of the things that the real mission for us from PH to Omnia clients and to everyone is to educate people, like is to deliver the stuff, but to educate them. So, you know, that's where we've got the the platform and that's why we're constantly building new resources on there to make things easier. But if we can educate people and, and give them a little bit of knowledge, knowledge makes everything simpler, like in nutrition. If you understand a little bit, I'm not saying that you need to go to, you know, a really scientific level. If you can understand how to grab and go, how to make a meal really quickly, how to distribute your protein intake actually how do you do it okay well here's a few options to get protein at breakfast here's a few options for protein at snacks here's a few pre-workout options so if you can educate yourself then it makes everything easier also you're going to get more out of your training and you're going to enjoy it like yeah. you know we've all been there that time where you maybe haven't got things right and your business is you know, meetings have overrun and then you've just kind of you know chasing your nutrition on the way to a training session and then you just get through it like I'm not saying that everything needs to be perfect every time, but if we can uh, if we can help people to kind of minimise those options, then ultimately the money that we're paying to kind of train, you know, whether that's in a CrossFit gym, whether it's in a global gym, or whether it's in the hills of Kent or Scotland, you're gonna get, you're gonna enjoy it more, and you're gonna make progress faster, and the feeling of progress is amazing, no matter how small it is, and, and that's what we're you know we're trying to to help people to do so. Yep. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm super excited about building out some more more relevant resources for hybrid athletes, like you said, the, you know, addressing these common faults, um, and hoping hopefully making making things easier for people. Exactly that. Very quick fire before we uh, close off. If I just summarise the sort of top salient points for hybrid athletes to consider here, and Liam, if you mm. can just add anything that I might miss off, I think number one is make sure you're eating enough to fuel your performance, which is a case of acknowledging portion sizes or really tracking your calories through the methods that we've already discussed. Number two is, I'd say, spreading your protein evenly across the day rather than IIFYMing it and having Pop-Tarts for dinner because you've had some Greek <laughs> yogurt that morning. Uh, number three, I'd pro I'm probably going to add in, actually, is, is acknowledge your sweat and salt balance, which is obviously something you've spoken yeah. about with supplementation, but can happen in your food as well. So if you've got double sessions and you're sweating like mad in the morning, make sure you're getting electrolytes in through your foods throughout the day or in the form of supplementation. Number four, I'd say, is set clear goals around body composition and performance. So as you said, going back to the calorie conversation, is have a clear goal in terms of what direction you want to go in. Is it maintain body weight, increase performance? Is it re reduce body weight whilst maximizing performance within that context? Having that clear goal will hold you accountable to the numbers you've set rather than ending up in that limbo zone. Number five, eat more veg. Hybrid training is varied. You're in and out of the sea, which in the UK is pretty disgusting. You're out on the bike, which means you're much more exposed to the element. You're in the hills, you're out running, you're in different gyms, whatever it might be. The stress can be high, the immune demand can be high so micronutrition is critical so those are the five things that i've really taken from today anything that you think i've missed oh, i think you're pretty smart mate um and just well, trying to start just, just trying to educate yourself knowledge yeah. knowledge makes everything always be a student easy. always be a student isn't it yeah, I guess, I guess, guys, yeah. you know 
what we're, we're talking about here in my calories and macros and numbers and all these flying around, like, you know, it, on the templates and, you know, on the coaching, we take care of everything. We make things super easy for you. So, like, you know, the calorie calculator is available for anyone that jumps on and takes away a lot of the guesswork and gives you real clarity in terms of what to kind of follow. So yeah, I was going to say num- number six. Done a lot uh, work for you. Exactly that number six. If uh, if your heart's breaking with all this information, come and see. Come and see Liam. Come see Liam via us, Liam, Tom, and the team. That's it. That's and, what I mean. Uh, you know, yeah. this, hey, this, yeah. this yeah. is what you guys are here to here to do, which is to help kind of lay out that path and and, and facilitate that kind of uh, you know that opportunity to to, to thrive, as as you've said a few times. And uh, yeah, that's a decent decent place to leave things. I think, isn't it? I'd say so, but just feel it's probably important to mention that for those that might be curious the relationship with PH Nutrition is as follows. So with the 16-week programs through omniaperformance.com, you get a collaborative PDF we've done that gives a real overview of how you can set up your own nutrition with a calorie calculator and all the information that you need to work it around your lifestyle. That's a PDF that you have and you can access whenever you want. And then you've got a bit more back office information that you can tweak as you go through that calculator. If you sign up to us with one-to-one coaching or are soon to launch sort of more group generic programming on a sort of monthly adjusting block basis then the same as the one-to-one coaching you will have access to the ph nutrition hub which is a one-stop shop for all things nutrition there's modules you can work through in your own time there and um, there's a community forum where you can get answers on a daily basis and then we have a monthly collaborative call not dissimilar to this one we've had today where we answer our athletes questions all at once and then within omnia Paratus coaching there is one-to-one nutrition management through one of the coaches at PH Nutrition. So just to give you an overview of what the partnership looks like, because it'd be silly of us not to really, (laughs) as this is ultimately the Omnia Performance Podcast, I think that is where we will close things off. So Liam, thank you very, very much for your time today. Thanks, Liam. And for all the hard work thus far in the partnership. And our athletes, thank you as well. They've been uh, raving about you. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, thanks again and speak soon. Thanks, lads. Thanks, Liam. Bye for now.